Hello and welcome to Hard on Hardware. This is the first video in what I hope to be a long series of uber budget builds. This whole process started about a month ago when I found a super cheap graphics card on a website called Yahoo Auction. Now I've spoken about Yahoo Auction on this on, on one of my videos before and it's basically the eBay of Japan. And because Japan is such a huge consumer economy, it means that you can find pretty much anything you can imagine on Yahoo Auction. The graphics card is the all-powerful NVIDIA GT220, which is, to be honest, the graphics card I've never really heard of, but I got it for super cheap. So first, let's do a bit of a breakdown of the components that I got for this $14 build. And as you can see, it's a super cheap PC. It costs about as much as a meal for two people at McDonald's. I'm actually a bit disappointed because at first I found an IDE hard drive for one yen. Um, to put that into perspective, one yen is less than one US cent. So in other words, I found a working hard drive for less money than you can actually spend on a thing in the United States. Although um, the problem with the, with the hard drive was that what I thought was a working IDE slot on the motherboard was actually a floppy drive slot, which I was under the impression that they're the same thing, but um, well, they are the same thing, except there's one pin that's been moved to a different spot. So it means that an IDE cable doesn't fit in. And the power supply that I bought, which was pretty junky like it's I wouldn't power anything of any value without power supply uh, doesn't have any Molex power in it for some reason which I didn't know that was a thing that's ever happened before in the history of the universe um, it's only got SATA power for like auxiliary stuff so that was really weird um, then I ended up having to go with the hard drive with the actual SATA drive that I have now uh, which was one of the cheapest I could find. I actually found a cheaper one, but that was after I already bought this one. But I did actually save some money in a really exciting place. I originally bought some horribly old Celeron for 200 yen, uh, which was gonna be the CPU. But then when I actually took the CPU cooler off the motherboard, there was actually a CPU in the motherboard that they didn't say anything about in the listing. So on, on the listing for the motherboard, it was two gigs of RAM, the motherboard and a CPU cooler. But they didn't realize that the motherboard had an actual CPU in it. And the CPU was way better than the Celeron that I had bought. So that meant that I could remove the Celeron from the budget. Um, so I had a bit more spending money for the hard drive. This is absolutely amazing. Um, I just took the CPU cooler off because I wanted to install the, the Celeron that I bought um, for this motherboard. And they actually, there's, there's a CPU already in the motherboard. On the listing, it didn't say anything about a CPU. Um, so I wonder what it is. Oh wow, the, the thermal paste is really, is is really really old it's obviously not been taken out in a very long time it's actually no way it's it's a core to duo e7 400 which is actually a better cpu than i bought for the motherboard another component that i was really excited about was the case i ended up getting it for a tiny amount i think about 21 yen and um, I didn't actually have to pay shipping on it because the guy lives very nearby to me. So I could take a train to his house. Uh, when I showed up outside his house, I waited for a couple of minutes. And when he came out, he seemed really surprised to see me. I guess it's because I'm 
a white guy. <laughs> Um, and apparently in Japan they're quite defensive of who uses Yahoo Auction because uh, it's a website based purely on trust and you know you don't know if you can trust foreigners I guess is the point um, and then he handed me the case and I just kind of said thank you and he was really surprised that I didn't want to check the case but I was like I, I paid 21 yen for it if the case doesn't give me diphtheria I've won massively and now, with all of the component listing out of the way, I think we can get into the actual build. struggle hugely to align the the IO shield and One of the really annoying things about the graphics card that I bought, well, it's not the only annoying thing, but the other annoying thing will come out later in the video, is that it doesn't have a full height PCI bracket at the back. It's kind of a half height thing because I'm pretty sure it was an OEM card that they used in some old Dell machine. It means that I couldn't actually fit the graphics card in the case that I bought, so I had to take it off. And now that the actual build is finished, I think it's time for some sexy B-roll. And as you can see, it's a highly sexy beast. And now it's time to find out whether or not it actually works. Okay, so this process has actually been fairly annoying, to be honest. Um, so this graphics card that I have in this machine is called a GT220. And it's a really old NVIDIA graphics card, but the specific one is a version that pretty much doesn't exist on the internet. Um, it, yeah, it's it's I couldn't find it anywhere and the issue with that is that the port in in the back here And I'll actually put up a bit of b-roll again showing you it again What you'd notice about it is that it looks like a DVI port, but it actually isn't a DVI port I don't know how in focus that is sorry, but it actually isn't a DVI port. It's something called uh, it's something called, and now I've actually forgotten the name. It's something called an FS, FSA port, I think it is. But it's ever so slightly different. And you can't actually get, uh, you can't get a DVI cable to fit in that. So I had to get this thing, which is a converter from that port to a DVI port, which is essentially the same thing, right? For some reason though, you can only get them in like a two-in-one configuration like this, like one of these ports to, to two DVI, which is a bit weird. And I just wanted to give you a quick, a quick peek at what actually ended up happening with this conversion. So the cable goes in there, and then it comes out to a DVI cable. I don't have a DVI cable, so I have this DVI to to HDMI converter and then an HDMI cable goes in there. So sorry for all the cable mess, but um, here here goes nothing. I, I have everything plugged in. I'm about to press the on button. Let's see if it works.
that's a teeny bit of a disaster, but I've actually started it up um, without the camera rolling because I, I think there's something wrong with the power button on the case because I just tripped the, the on on the, on the motherboard and it's worked. And it works, it's fantastic news. Uh, the CPU that came with the motherboard is actually functioning. Uh, so let's go into the BIOS and let's see what it does. Oh, it's just super old school. I love it. Uh, BIOS. I don't know how it works at all. Chipset features. Because I'm obviously at some point going to overclock the living crap out of it. So I just need to see where that works. It's the standard CMOS features. And there's the hard drive. There's the... Yay, it's actually functioning! Virus warning, that's an exciting feature. CPU feature. I don't know what any of those are. But yay, it works! So now I'm going to install Windows on it, and then let's see what kind of games we can run with it. There we go, there's some, some Half-Life 2. Let's see what the standard settings are. It's gone to 1080p, advanced... Everything's on high, weirdly. Oh yeah, well, let's see what happens. And here we go, we're in the train! It's like 70 frames per second! That's just... It, it feels weird. It feels like it shouldn't be doing this. Ah! Oh, the thing just attacked me! Oh, there's an alien sweeping! How do I come at me, bro? Come on. You think you're better than me? Okay, so this is Skyrim, and it actually works. Look at that. Skyrim works on a PC that costs about as much as two Big Macs. I think that's oh my God. that's actually pretty ridiculous, and it doesn't look that bad. Okay, so I've now decided to actually use uh, high settings, and as you can see, it's it's running considerably worse. It's it's really struggling. Um, and now after I ran the games, I decided that I should run some form of synthetic benchmark on the machine uh, just to have a baseline that I can test again against other PCs that I do later on. And this was really difficult, uh, purely because I couldn't get anything to install on it. I tried PC Mark 08, first of all, but it just pretty much refused to install no matter how many times I tried, and I tried different install files, nothing worked. Uh, then I moved on to 3D Mark 03, which worked. I was really surprised. It installed quite easily, and I ended up getting a score of 20,436, which is seemingly very impressive, but it's a benchmark from very, very long ago. So then I decided, why not run 3D Mark 06, which is a benchmark that I actually used on my first ever PC back in the day. Uh, Although that didn't work either, it refused to install. I don't really understand why. Having said that about the actual benchmarking apps being really difficult to install, I'm actually surprised that any of the games installed because the machine ran quite badly. Uh, I couldn't, the internet didn't work properly. I mean, you can kind of get into the internet, but it didn't display half of the anything properly. Mozilla wouldn't work, Chrome wouldn't work, uh, they just kind of blatantly refuse to do anything. And um, I don't know how much of it is down to the actual PC uh, as supposed to the actual version of Windows XP that I used because I, I don't have a legitimate version of XP and I didn't pirate XP, but because of how old of an operating system it is, there are all these kind of like, these are legitimate free downloads of XP everywhere on the internet. And I used one of those and I don't know how legitimate it is because it A, refused, absolutely refused to update. I mean, I wanted to install like Service Pack 3 on it or something like that, and it just refused to do anything of the like. 
and um, yeah, it was a really, really buggy experience. Everything except for Steam though. Steam worked brilliantly, all the games I installed from Steam worked really well. Um, so, as a pure gaming machine for $14, it was quite a great experience to be honest. I ended up playing Half-Life 2 for like 3 or 4 hours. It's one of the reasons it took so long for this video to come out, is because I just got so distracted playing Half-Life 2 on it. And it actually infuriated me from the beginning at why is Half-Life 3 almost never going to come out? Like, I, I can't believe that. In, it's it's been what it's been 13 years now and it's still not out I really don't think we're ever gonna see the game and it's a huge disappointment so the PC made me realize that I'm highly disappointed all over again that Half-Life 3 isn't coming out so maybe it was a very disappointing experience using the machine Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I, I have another even cheaper PC in the mail on its way to me. So do look out for that video. Like and subscribe so that you don't miss it. I don't know how liking this video would help you not miss the up and coming video. So just go ahead and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching once again.